Are you sick of losing gunfights to players who actually suck? And he bombs, dude, the timing. What's what's main? What's main? What's main? What's main? Or are you sick of having a 0.9 KD when you should probably have a 1.2? Well, you came to the right place today. I'll be going over how to win more gunfights and how to properly position yourself overall. I have four essential tips that I think that every single Rainbow Six Siege player should know or implement into their everyday life slash gameplay. So if you guys enjoy this video or you want to see any other tip videos in the future, let me know by commenting what videos you want to see and be sure to like the video. Let's get into it. Let's go over the very basic of perspective. Now, just so you guys know, perspective is in the middle of an operator's head. Just to clear this up, I basically meant the camera. So what you're seeing is in the middle of the head. You should keep this in mind when you're taking gunfights, taking angles, everything in between, because this is a huge part of just siege in general. Because if you can't position your body properly, then you're going to lose so many more gunfights, even if you're a better player. Now, let's look at the two perspective. Now, I'm going to explain why how when you should lean how you should lean why you're leaning and even just how perspective works in general so let's look at doc's perspective right now i want you to think is he taking this angle right for a person that might come up green stairs he's anticipating someone here don't think about the crosshair placement just look at how he's leaning where he's positioned i want you to actually go down in the comments now and let me know if it's right or wrong okay if you typed wrong then you're right because let's look while i'm coming up this staircase doc not only can i see his shoulder and then his head i'm seeing more of his body than what's needed i can even see the tip of his head now even though th this example is a 50 50 gunfight meaning that doc literally can win the gunfight even leaning like this and position like this but that's not the point because if you look at jackal Jackal, even though his head still sticks out, he is still in a winning situation right now. And that's because coming up green stairs, he only has a limited amount of angles that he needs to watch. Basically being this square, whatever is in front of him, right? So him coming up here, he should win this gunfight. Doc has to worry about this entire staircase. And the thing about Jackal is he can actually like completely go around this angle by going close to the staircase and then quickly peeking doc has too many angles he has to worry about and the perspective will just be off in general now here's how doc should take this gunfight okay now here's how this guy should take this gunfight instead of going all the way back here all he has to do is step back right here instead of holding this little door what, what this allows him to do is have the perspective advantage. And the reason why that's being, he's at a farther angle. And Jackal will have to make sure nobody's in the corner there. He's coming. And then by the time he swings, it might be too late. Because what a lot of people do when they come up staircases is they'll hug the wall that they're going towards. And that's so they get as much angle as possible is what they assume. Instead, what Jackal should be doing, once again is you're better off hugging close on a staircase because then you have a more winning chance than if you were to go super wide because that's what's expected but to basically sum up what i mean doc he was leaning the left way on this and he was basically giving up perspective by holding way too wide and way too in the open it's just way way too easy for jackal to win this gunfight compared to if he was wider and farther back now let's explain leaning in general when it's when it comes to taking gunfights so what a lot of people will do in gunfights is they will for some reason lean the wrong way while taking gunfights so let's let's take jackal as an example here he's coming up the staircase he's leaning to the left but if he swaps to the right, what tends to happen is you give up a lot of angles that you should be able to have. Like, for example, if anybody swings this double, if anybody comes on the single, if anybody's like close in green door, you're just giving up perspective out of the ass. Now, let me explain why once again. So if I'm Doc swinging on this little double and this guy's leaning this way, guess what? I have all these things in the way, like this shelf, this bookcase, all of that. 
And Doc has the easiest frag of his life. But if, uh, but if Jackal came up the staircase straight, then he would have a proper angle on him. If Jackal came up leaning left, he still has that same angle. But if you notice, if he's leaning straight and he's coming up, touching the staircase, he has some of the hand. But in reality, Doc still has the advantage because he's able to see basically Jackal's entire body. So as you can tell, I'm taking a gunfight and I'm going to be swinging left. I lean left. Now, notice the difference when I lean left right here. I can't see the door that I'm trying to lean into. I have no, like, um, protection. If I lean straight, it's more 50-50, but my entire body is showing. If I'm leaning right, I have the most cover. And when I quick peek, it's almost like Doc can only see my arm and my hand, limiting the possibility of me getting headshotted and dying. So to sum up what I'm saying, if you're taking a gunfight and you're swinging right, lean right if you're swinging left lean left never and i mean never do this if i'm swinging right and leaning left look look like it's just so stupid i i see so many people doing this now here's something that i i see so many players doing and they use proning way too much so let me show you why proning is so bad so notice how I'm dock right now and I'm holding like a pixel peak basically. I can see Doc's entire arm and Doc doesn't see anything in my body until I swing a little bit wide here. But what's crazy is since his head is in the middle right here, I could literally just shoot him in the head being right here. Now, how should you guys take gunfights like this? Of course, you can... You can kill him from afar, that's great. But if you know somebody's in a corner, proning, for example. Like, say, Doc is right here. He made some noise. Should you swing wide, or should you swing tight? Swinging tight basically means hugging the wall, and then killing him. And then swinging wide means you're, in, you're going wide up to the wall. And this is something I see a lot of people mistaking. If someone's in a tight corner like this, you should usually swing tight, and that's because the perspective... Of the person is going to be shown and you can get some gunshots gunshots off and and kill him but if you swing super wide and you don't react until you're wide he has a 50 50 chance of killing you so limit your deaths just by taking gunfights like this now let's say that you know somebody's on the b-bomb right and you think that i need to take this gunfight i don't want to overexpose myself how should you take this gunfight well, usually Doc would have his crosshairs a little wide, anticipating that you're going to swing wide. This is a very common thing, and this allows a more 50-50 gunfight. Of course, you can crouch and do all this silly nilly stuff, but if you're clearing, for example, the A-bomb, the door, you can get a quick peek off by just holding tight. And it's going to be so difficult for the guy to go from sh looking over here to flicking on the door frame. And then you can pair that with, let's say, like crouching and all that willy-nilly that people do. Now, if somebody is super, super, you know, far out holding tight, this is a very bad, like, tight pixel. But if you see, this is another problem. People will hold tight angles like this and not realize that their entire body is exposed because of the angle. Now, if I was swinging to the right, he, he would have the perspective advantage on me. If I swing too like close right here, right? You can still shoot some of my hand maybe. Here, if I'm swinging, that's easy. This is why a lot of you guys die. Instead, what you should be doing is, for example, right, right up here on this door frame, you can't really get the angle that you want. So you just shouldn't be playing it in general. If you're going to be retaking crouch, come back in, and then you know, play play right here. Of course, there's this door here, which a lot of people put a zombie barrier on. So let's just act like there's a zombie barrier. But yeah. And then even if they're swinging from the right and they're coming in, you are still able to now maybe have a fair gunfight. If they swing from the door frame, you have a fair gunfight as well. 
So just try to picture where your body is going to be placed from attackers POV or for defenders, whichever role that you're playing right now. Um, and, and think about how you can use your perspective for your advantage. Next up, number two is swapping your role. Now, let's say you're having a bad game. You're playing support. Automatically, you will crutch that idea that you're playing support so you can play bad. You can lose gunfights. The reality is Siege is much deeper than just getting frags on whatever role you're playing. A lot of the times, the best thing that you can possibly be doing when playing bad is actually play the opposite type of role. So for example, if you've been playing Hard Breach all game and you're getting smoked left and right, go to Entry Fragger. Go, go to a more roaming, go to a more frag heavy operator where you know you're going to have to engage in gunfights. And this nine times out of 10 has always worked for me because Siege is all about tempo, whether that's how you take a map or how you defend a map. It's all about tempo, how you take gunfights and all of that. So sometimes you just need a tempo change. This in turn will also help you learn how to play those roles as well if you don't play them enough. Let's say I know a lot of people will play a hard breach if they're, let's say, older or if they're newer to the game because they automatically think that they can just open up a wall and their job is done and they can die. No, you need to learn how to be able to entry frag, how to roam clear, how to be a defender and waste time, or even how to play sight. Every single role in Siege is just as important as one another. Just get out of your box, be comfortable, and just learn how to play other roles. Because if you crutch whatever role you main right now until you get into high ranking, you're going to notice that there's going to be some gaps in what you've learned and you're going to be missing a lot of knowledge in Siege. Next up is working out. Now, I want to spread this message especially to anybody that's in high school. I feel like in high school you can literally eat anything and your body isn't changing because once you become an adult you are not moving as much as you were as a teenager so weight is very easy to gain man so working out now especially for any women that's watching this video lifting weights is super important for your bone strength because as you get older your bones actually deteriorate a lot quicker than men's but this is also where today's plug comes in which is control Control is a fantastic meal replacement, but they also have protein bars, protein shakes that taste like heaven. My favorite is the Coco Crunch shake, and it basically just tastes like Nesquik. And what's great about this is it only has one gram of sugar with 23 grams of protein and only 230 calories. So it feels like cheating, but it really isn't. If you guys are interested, go check out down in the description. There will be a link to their website and you can use code Garfield for some percentage off. But overall, working out does help your mental, your physical and everything else in between. So get started now, guys. If you guys are in high school, lift some weights. If you're a girl, you're not going to turn out looking like China from the WWF. You're going to be more than fine. You're just going to tone up. Last but not least is knowing positioning. Now, at the very start, I talked about perspective and just how you can position your body, but positioning of your teammates and knowing where their position is super important for Siege. I see a lot of people on defense having a hard time acknowledging where their teammates are or what the goal is, and locating the gap is super important on attack and defense. Now, what locating a gap basically means, it, it means where there might be a possible opening for the attackers to get in and take over the round and get in the site easily. So being able to locate that is super important. And more importantly, knowing where your teammates are is the first step to knowing where the gap is. Because if you look around and you see your teammates are all bunched up in one area, probably the other side of site is the gap, for example. And this is something that's very common in copper, bronze, silver, gold, and even plat. Because a lot of players will hear a noise and they'll run at them like a bunch of ants trying to get little pieces of bread. So what you should always be doing is instead of being constantly conscious about what you're doing and being anxious that you might be doing something stupid or that an enemy might be pushing, is when you have time in the round, look around, look at what your teammates are doing on defense and be like, okay, if I'm in a five stack, I can tell my teammates to adjust and fill out the gap or you yourself rotate and fill out the gap. And this also goes into how to get more frags because once you notice a gap, you will be able to fill out that place and more than likely that's where attackers are going to attack. 
Now, on the flip side, locating the gap in itself is super important. And this goes into droning out, your teammates droning out, locating that information, and then acting on it. Too many people will drone something out and be like, yo, I might have a play. And then they constantly drone everything else out. And that allows the defenders to readjust and shoot your drone. And then all that information that you had is dead. Meaning you can't really act off of it anymore because it's like 30 seconds old basically so on attack if you locate a gap and you notice your teammates are positioned a specific way then act off of it and looking around and seeing what your teammates are doing is super important as well because you can maybe play off of them and make plays based off of where your teammates are pinching for example if all your teammates are on the main breach guess what you guys are gonna probably lose that round in higher ranks because it's so easy for every defender to just worry about one freaking angle. So instead, you can push maybe the opposite side of the map and get a pinch down, or get one of your teammates to go with you up a staircase and maybe get a two roll pinch on the enemies. Overall, it's just locating the positioning of wherever your teammates are and then being able to play off them, whether that's for a refrag or for pinching the defenders or attackers. This is super important and this is a very low key way of playing siege that i see too many newer players not understanding now if you guys enjoyed this video and you found it actually helpful let me know down in the comments and if you want to see me talk about any type of tips that you, you might be struggling with let me know down in the comments and i'll definitely make a video about it guys besides that guys if you have guys had a great day and you made it to the very end of the video comment down below goat's milk in my nose <laughs> besides that have a good day guys